Do you have a mate that doesn't seem great? Maybe their team is up, but they're still down. A dare fix won't fix it, but a conversation could. Ask, are you okay? Dare Ice Coffee, a proud partner of Are You Okay? On SEN Track, it's time to banter with Bensley, bringing you racing's unique stories. Yes, our uh, daily banter. We welcome in a special guest from New Zealand, and uh, I'll set it up by saying we're honoured uh, to have the brand of Cambridge Stud being linked now with the Bensley program uh, for the next 12 months here on SEN Track. Cambridge Stud, New Zealand's iconic thoroughbred nursery. You can visit them. Choose your stallion. Choose the beautiful stallions that Cambridge Stud have by going to Cambridge Stud. Dot co dot nz and the CEO of Cambridge Stud Henry Plumtree is joining our banter. Welcome, Henry. Good morning, Andrew. What a welcome! What a welcome! Well, it deserves. Very, we're, very, we're delighted to be part of your show. I have to say, I haven't had a chance to say this publicly, but I think it's a it's a fantastic thing for us, and um, it uh, it sort of keeps us in with a long standing tradition of talking to you over the last thirty years, which is. The first rule of radio is if you're going to go on someone's show, find a bloke who can talk a lot, and we reckon we found the right bloke. I can talk a lot. Don't worry about <laughs> that, Henry. <laughs> uh, look, it's it's an exciting time. I want to talk about your racehorses, but also it's an exciting few days coming up for Cambridge Stud when you welcome a stadion. Yeah, we do. Um, we've had a bit of a full start with the stallions um, because of the border um, situation here in New Zealand with our Prime Minister, who's very risk averse about people or anything coming into New Zealand. Uh, we only really have the DHL flights coming in and out of New Zealand now, which means that all the stallions coming to New Zealand had to go to Melbourne to quarantine, which is fine, but we're delayed one week. So they actually touched down in Auckland on Friday night and they will be in their boxes at Cambridge. Our two will be in their boxes at Cambridge by about 10 o'clock in the evening. But uh, it's quite a big plane load coming this year. I think there are about 12 stallions coming into New Zealand this year. Uh, I so it's exciting times. It is exciting. Uh, uh, we're going to talk to Brendan uh, and Joe Lindsay next week when the stallions get there and get a bit of a feel about it. But, Henry, you've been there for a few years now. Uh, you've had your ups and downs in regard to stallions, but... I can't wait to see more of El Manzor. They just seem to be starting to rocket through. Well, I hope so. I mean, it's, uh, you know, if you're a stud master, they often say one of the one of the bigger problems that a stud master with a nice stud in has got is when they sell very well as yearlings. And uh, the expectation is that they're going to run out of their skins in that first year. And what often happens is that they have a bit of a quiet first year. And I'm not putting a damper on the horse at all, mm. but we bought him as a middle distance European champion. And uh, it would be surprising if he gets horses that run uh, precociously before Christmas. But um, look, we've been very lucky with the buying bench that bought into the horse, Andrew. We've some fantastic trainers in Australia and in New Zealand put their hand up and took them into their yards. And um you know, most of them are good judges and some very good agents as well. So we're in their hands, but I'm very confident. Henry, let's talk about a few of the racehorses that under the uh, the uh, colours, the bright colours of Cambridge Stud. I guess the obvious is Probabil. We had Jamie Richards, your trainer, on briefly yesterday. There'd been a, a slight hiccup with a, a spike of temperature. Uh, has it forced a rethink? Yeah, a little bit of a rethink. I mean, obviously, the Memji was her target as an opening race on the 28th of August. Um, it would be prudent not to not to get her ready for that now. I mean, she's had a temperature spike last week. Uh, she, she's, she had two or three, four days, four or five days, let's say, to get over that. But we put her flight back a week with her travelling companion, Carmel Ash, and they are now leaving a week today rather than leaving this evening because it's just with with the uncertain weather at the moment, the temperature's very up and down and uh, we just don't want to go and push her buttons anymore. Uh, so hopefully she'll be in Melbourne. I mean, she'll kick off sometime in early September and then probably the reroute will look something like the stock stakes at Mooney Valley at the end of September 
and into the Torak handicap. And then if she's going well enough, we'd think about another crack at the Cox Plate. Okay, so if you ended up at the Valley, it could be fourth up. If we end up at the Valley, it could be fourth up, yeah. I mean, I think probably that first run is going to be fairly critical, and it may be that we go to a club and ask for an exhibition gallop yeah. um, rather than that run on the 28th of August, um, something like that. And then she can run, you know, there's a race, there's, there's quite a nice race at Flemington, uh, 1400 metre group two, fillers and mares in early September. She could run in that as an opening run. So um, it's right. just a rethink. Yep. I mean, obviously, it's not quite as not quite as um, ambitious as the original program. But then, you know, they're horses, and it's that time of year when things go wrong. You know, one that I understand went around yesterday was sort of state a horse that uh, you've really showed a great deal of potential in in saying we want you to be a, sta- a stallion for us in the future. Um, what's the plan with that horse? Well, we have a we have a really good um, relationship with Tiaka, and uh, he is one of one of four colts in a colt syndicate that David bought. David Ellis bought that year. He bought him from Magic Millions. Um, we buy in a, a low percentage in, in in all four of the colts, and um, in the expectation that we may get one in every five or six that is good enough for us to take a bigger stake in, like Sword of State. And obviously, he's got a beautiful pedigree. He's by Schnitzel. I mean, we have an aspirational spring for him, which ends in the Coolmore Stud. And we've, walked, we, we've worked our way back from the Coolmore um, on Derby Day. Um, he's a bit like probably He had a couple of days off last week with the temperature, which he's bounced through pretty quickly. Um, he'll fly out to Sydney on Friday. And uh, the program for him... If he makes the Golden Rose program, well, that's all good. If he doesn't, he'll probably go in through the back door, something like the Heritage Stakes at the end of September, followed by the Roman Consul, and then down to the Coolmore. But the Coolmore would be his target race. And as I said, that's an aspirational thing. He may not be up to it, but we're sending him over there because we think he is up to it. That sort of state. Now, there's probably one or two others that you've got, either Sydney in and Melbourne, in your thoughts? Yeah, we've got a nice mare called Karma Lass, who was a New Zealand 1,000 guineas winner last year. Uh, she travelled to Sydney in the autumn and probably on the back up from Rickerton, she probably didn't really handle it. And I think it probably didn't help that the trainer couldn't get there either. Um, and she didn't perform in Sydney in the autumn. We bought her home and spelled her, gave her a good break. But she's a Group 1 winner. Um, I'm not suggesting that she should, she'll be thrown into a Group 1 over there, Andy, but we think she'll be very competitive at that listed Group 3 level. Yep. And it's good for her resume, you know. Yep. That sort of mare, we, we might have a couple of two-year-olds in the autumn, but, you know, we're trying them at the moment. I understand. It's still a strong team, and the one thing that we'll learn over the, uh, the, the ride with the Cambridge Stud is that the love that Brendan and Joe Lindsay have for their horses, whether they're horses that are standing as stadiums at Cambridge or whether they're sending horses across to Australia or racing in New Zealand, they love it. Yeah, they absolutely love it. I mean, they've, they've, they've copped some fairly major blows um, in the first two years of operation here. And I've said it many times, uh, they've shrugged it off and they've moved forward with that extraordinary enthusiasm that they've got for the industry. And, you know, that's very much part of the whole process here at Cambridge is to be part of that New Zealand, New Zealand industry recovery, which is on, underway. There's no I, doubt it's I, underway. I was just going to bring that up finally with you, Henry, this morning. We've seen change. We've seen SENZ go in there and take over the tab signals, which is fantastic for racing and sports followers in New Zealand. But the flow through outside that with prize money and I think the synthetic tracks have given people just, you know, just a little kick of confidence through the winter. Absolute game changers, Andy. You know that from your experience in Melbourne. I know that from my experience in Australia generally that all weather tracks in a climate which generally is wet for three or four months of the year are an absolute lifesaver. The yeah. trainers, they're a lifesaver for the horses because it basically means that they don't have to run on the grass and chew that up through the winter. 
you know, again, aspirationally, what New Zealand should be looking for is four of these all weathers. The one at Rickerton, I understand, has just been completed. Yep. I'd say they need another one in Auckland and they need another one at Palmerston. If they had four of them, that'll make them very competitive through the next 20 years. And that's all part of the restructure, which is, which is definitely moving ahead. Fantastic to have Cambridge start a part of uh, Bensley on SEN track. We'll talk to uh, Brendan next week when the, all the full brigade of stadiums is based there. Uh, appreciate your time, Henry, and stay well over there. It's always a pleasure. Thanks, Andrew. Henry Plumtree, the CEO of Cambridge Stud. Cambridge Stud is synonymous with big race success and now New Zealand's famous nursery is building for the future. Go and visit their website, cambridgestud.co.nz. cambridgestud.co.nz. Stop the hassle. Get your business insurance online in minutes with BizCover. With BizCover, get multiple quotes from some of Australia's leading insurers and buy in just a few clicks with no paperwork. BizCover, that's business insurance made easy. bizcover.com.au